Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds. Gabrielle Union, I am such an admirer of yours. I, you know, I got my flawless over here. I'm all things Gabrielle Union. And I got to thinking about Zoe and this wonderful family and seeing you in a classic that I've always enjoyed and how you manage work-life balance. It's a challenge for all of us. What is the key to maintaining work-life balance like Zoe, like you do in your own life? Because you are a woman that does many, many things at any given time. Um, well, there's the Zoe Baker way, which is to always take the high road, always be very patient, constantly feel like she's underwater, take it all on, take it all on until she finally erupts. Um, my version, the Gab version, I write about in, you know, in my latest book in a chapter called F balance, but I actually say the full expletive because I believe that this notion of balance was created by the patriarchy to make women feel like they're constantly failing at something mm. because there's only 24 hours in a day. And if you're going to, if I'm going to be a New York Times bestselling author and, and an actress and a producer and a mom and a wife and, and a this and a that, and then a great friend and a, a philanthropist and, and an activist, there's only 24 hours in a day. You, you literally can't do it all. So instead of searching for that elusive balance that doesn't actually exist, I ask for and uh, receive grace. And I also extend it. Um, there is something magical that can happen when we articulate uh, where we're at, you know? I don't have it today. I need help. I, I can, can, do you mind if I'm a little late? I just need to sit on the toilet for a two seconds to gather myself. <laughs> and you will be surprised how people will be just from being honest and saying, I, can I get a little grace? that people will extend it. And when they, they extend it and you receive it, it's like, oh wait, I can also extend it to others. And that's how the world goes round. And I rely heavily on my village. Big ups to our nannies, my little sister who moved, like I, we had to move into our, our house. We moved both of our moms during the pandemic. My, my niece, I mean, homeschool, there's, there, was, there was too much going on for us to handle it all. We have big lives. So if we did not rely heavily on the village and grace, there is no, there, even the, 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 no, like the notion of balance is, is a farce. It is. And I like that you said that. I feel like so much grace is lost just for people in general, for, for the simplest things. What, is th what are three ways that we can extend grace helpfully? You know, some people want to do it for you and that's not exactly what you need. It's just, let me have a pause, like you mentioned, to go to the bathroom or do something. What are three effective ways that we can exercise grace in our life for others? Don't lose it over being late. And I am guilty of this. So this is something I am personally working on. I do not believe in tardiness. It just, it, it just makes me feel disrespected. It makes mm -hmm. me feel like you think your time is more valuable than my time. Um, but I've also been late because there's a thousand things to do. It's hard to get out of the house when you have a house full of people all needing things. When people are late, it's not the end of the world. You'll figure it out. The world adapts, things move on. You don't need to lose it every single time. You know, If you know what's going on with somebody, it's okay to just offer grace and not even you know, to let somebody off the hook. When they come in and they're frazzled, just be like, baby, it's okay, take a minute. Take a minute. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. That's one way. Um, being open to hearing, you know what? I don't know. Always expecting people to have a precise, you know, answer all the time. That's a weird pressure too. And mm. being open to saying, you know, or hearing, you know, I, I don't know, but let's figure that out together. That is an extension of grace that we rarely offer each other. Um, what else can we do to offer grace? Offer to pick somebody's kid up. Period. Period. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you, like you can get a sense in the, in the pickup line. And when you're talking to other parents and, or, you know, you're, you're at the sideline of an, of whatever activity, you know, when people need a break and they're at that, at that point where they're snapping at the kid, like, it's okay to be like, you know what? go home. I got it. I'll, I'll drop him off a little later. I'll, I'll take him to get some food. 
you can, you can do that. That's a thing that will give somebody a freaking moment to gather themselves um, and just take a minute for themselves and before they snap, before they do something that they, it's hard to take back. We can step in and be like, I got it. I got it. I, I'll take them. I'll take them. Don't even worry about it. Well, Matt, I thank you. I loved you in this. This is a classic film. You are wonderfully talented and amazing. And I thank you for your time. I enjoyed this so, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.